What's up, everybody? Welcome into a rapid reaction presented by Buyers Auto. We are on the field of the horseshoe. We're on the 24-yard line. Uh, no specific. I like to pick those in the season, it's like a specific moment beyond that part of the field. No, nothing specific here. Just the way the wind blows, I guess. Actually. South end. We're on the 24 south end. That's yep. the 40-year vet Tim May. He's seen, he's seen plenty of spring games. That's Andy Baxter. I'm Spencer Holbrook. Fellas, thanks for joining me. Uh, Tim, first takeaway from the Ohio State spring game. Let's Archie not waste Griffin, time. Archie Griffin has still got it. I mean, he swept right in like he was running for another Heisman Trophy. Uh, scored one of the offense's only three, I think it was three touchdowns for the day. Am I correct? Uh, no. They got maybe. No, I think it was three, wasn't it? It was Archie Griffin, Noah Rogers, Noah Rogers. and Carnell Tate. You are correct, Tim. Chip yeah. Chip Chip Tran Tran so four. four. So four. Yeah. But one quarter of their touchdowns came from a Heisman Trophy winner from the mid-70s. who's basically my age. I think that sums up the struggles the uh, offense kind of had today going against a revitalized Ohio State defense. Yeah, I think, Andy, that it's not as much that the defense – that the offense struggled, and I do think the offense did struggle, but we, we have to give a little bit of flowers to the defense because I think there's just a different level that they're playing at right now. And I know you weren't here last spring to compare them, but it, you know, Tim and I will attest to this. Like, it just looks a little different. It looks a little faster. It looks a little quicker than it did last spring. Edge. Yeah, a little more oomph to it, if you will. Uh, I, I think this defense looks like it's in a pretty good spot heading into summer, Andy. Yeah, my biggest takeaway was the cornerbacks. I thought they played really well. We have heard really all spring about how they're touching the rock and they're just challenging passes more than they had last year. And I think we saw that today, especially Denzel Burke. I thought he had maybe the best game of anyone today. He disrupted a couple passes. One was to Carnell Tate, another was to Jaden Ballard downfield. Davis and Igbenosin looked pretty good today too, not only tackling, but also in coverage. And so I feel like that secondary looks faster. They say they're faster. I believe it so far, at least. And then also in the backfield, you know, Ryan Day said, yes, there's inconsistency with the offensive line, but that also means the defensive line is doing well. We saw Tyleek Williams, we saw Mike Hall, we saw, you know, even Caden Curry getting back there at times. Kenyatta Jackson. Kenyatta Jackson. Yeah. So you can kind of go through a laundry list of names there. I felt like they all played pretty well today. Absolutely. And I'm going to go to the linebackers because it's weird. I've seen plenty of spring games here, Tim. We've seen a lot of touch football in the spring game. We've also seen some times where linebackers kind of flash. And CJ Hicks flash almost had two interceptions. Got to probably work on the hands a little bit. We'll make sure to tell him that. Uh, next time we see him around the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Gabe Powers almost had an interception. Also, uh, you know, just getting in the hole and, and making sure that he's getting there quickly. I thought Cody Simon had a good day. He was impressive. He's had a good spring. When you lose Steel Chambers and, and Tommy. Reed Carrico. Reed, Reed Carrico, Carrico played well. He, he didn't look bad. He looked like he was filling the holes in the yep. run. I thought that these linebackers played really well. And they were one of the groups that I was watching just because Steel Chambers, Tommy Eckenberg, not out there, obviously. Um, if those guys that we mentioned are back to full or at full strength while Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg are back in the fall. I think this linebacker room has a chance to be really deep and really, really gifted, talented. Uh, that's going to be a good group, Tim, if they can all be healthy. Yeah, if you when you only play two at a time, you should be deep there. Yeah. You know, until about that fourth recruiting cycle when you're only playing two at a time. <laughs> but I digress. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree with you. But it, they needed to see those guys step up more than they needed to see Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers. Yep. So that was. You know the silver lining of the cloud there that uh, both of those guys were got ba either got banged up or were banged up going into the spring i agree with you uh yeah cj hicks is the real deal cj hicks i think through the spring has proven he deserves playing time in the fall we already know what cody simon can do yeah. he deserves playing time so you know they got a pair and a pair of spare so as that goes we'll see how that develops how they end up playing these guys uh you know the other thing is sunny styles definitely had it made his presence known. yeah yeah. quite a few times, quite a few plays. Uh, there's a guy that you got to think is going to be on the field in some form or fashion is that enforcer dude running, basically running the alley for one of another term, up front uh, one minute, maybe a little bit deeper the next. Um, I think that's encouraging for this defense. But I was talking to Denzel Burke afterwards, and I go, you know, this is a totally different feeling compared to the way they left the field. Like when I asked Ryan Day about that in the post-game press conference, the way they left the field after that Georgia game. This defense feels like it's found something, and they've got an edge to them. You're still going to give up plays. That's going to happen. You still want to give up a bunch of them, you know. And uh, they never touched Archie Griffin. They got to go back and watch some film on that. I didn't. I didn't see a lot of hustle on that play. It was but, an uh, effort play for with sure. With the exception man. of that, the Chip Trainum run, great block by Tegra Shabola, great block by Patrick Gerd, and boom. He goes uh, down the field 65 yards. That was really the one real bust, right? I mean, Cardinal Tate was one-on-one. -on -one. 
uh, with, a, with a corner. You either make the play or you don't. He's just better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim, go ahead and debut your nickname for Chip Train and Walrat. Well, I ch it changed throughout the uh, throughout the game. It went from Night Train Trainer, and I thought that was a little bit redundant. So now it's Chip Runaway Trainer. Okay. We can work with that. Because cool. he did run away. I mean, he does have top end. If you go back and watch his video from uh, Arizona State as a running back, when, when he got a when he got a shot, he took it. Well, let's do this, Tim. How about when he's running away from defenders, we'll do runaway train him. And then when he's plowing over defenders at 230 pounds, he can be the, 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 Night train? the chip, the freight train him. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Okay. I well, don't like I, I like runaway because that just means he's uh, almost, he's teetering on being out of control. I lost it. I lost the show. <laughs> We're back on the rails. Uh, speaking of trains, we're back on the rails. Freight uh, yard. Tim, Andy, quarterback. Uh, Kyle McCord, shaky at first. I thought he got a lot better as the day went on. I think that's a trend, by the way. I I'm anxious to see. Kyle McCord, when he seems to settle in, seems to get better. That first scrimmage we watched, once he settled in, he got a lot better. Today, once he settled in, he made a, a sideline throw. Yep. Zoop, over the top to uh, a very nice catch for Jaden Ballard, but that was a perfectly, pl perfectly placed ball. He did it again sideline i can't remember who it was to uh but it was a beautiful throw on the sideline uh, andy's got the gif on his twitter account and then he throws the gorgeous touch ball 37 37 yards uh, you know with just perfect touch to slot bait to carnell tate that was a perfect pass it was yeah. like, that was a cj stroud esque throw yes and those are the kind of throws that make me believe that he stands out yeah and you didn't see that at the beginning even on the throw to Jaden Ballard down the seam where he tried to get him on a fourth down, that there wasn't that touch on it. Jaden had to turn his back and try to maybe make a, a, a spectacular catch. No, he didn't see the touch. But once he settled in, I thought you saw some of that touch from the other side. You can go to Andy now, but I, I do agree. And uh, he had to show that. I mean, finally, by the end of the day, but you heard what Brian Day said. I mean, this has been sort of a, not up and down, but sort of an inconsistent spring for the, both of the quarterbacks who are going yeah. for the starting job. And, uh, uh, but you're right. I mean, it just seems like the second half, I mean, I that was our first takeaway from the first scrimmage we got to watch. When the second half kind of started in that in that scrimmage, Kyle McCord stepped up. Yeah. And he did that again today. Oh, but it wasn't, enough to, it wasn't enough to beat the defense. It also doesn't help that there was no Emeka Buka, no Julian Fleming, no Xavier yeah. Johnson. The running game was weird because it was touch football for a lot of when Kyle McCord was in there. And also, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison only played, I think, six, seven snaps. <laughs> right. But Marvin Harrison Jr. could be a top five pick, and the rest of these wide he receivers got are pretty good, too. when he was in there. Yeah, yeah he was absolutely. great. That, yeah. There was one drive early on. He had three catches on a drive. And I think Kyle McCord was at his best with these layered throws, with the comebacker routes, with the outbreaking routes, which is encouraging for an Ohio State fan because those are the hard throws to make. Like, those are the, the ones, ones you can't teach. Yeah, those are the ones that you either have it or you don't. And what's interesting is when you have young or inexperienced quarterbacks, they usually love in between the numbers. That's where they kind of live. It's harder for them to make the sideline throws. Yeah. Well, Colin McCord was making those sideline throws. He wasn't as good in between the numbers. So that's why it's really interesting watching his play. And that's why it's encouraging because you would think that he would improve in between the numbers as time goes on. And some of those things that are just kind of intangible talents, he seems to have, especially with the velocity, which he showed off today. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's, that's what it, I mean. I already talked about the quarterbacks, but I'll talk about it again. Kyle McCord comes out of the spring as their number one quarterback He's just because of the way the spring ended. But no one has said this. Is, I even asked them about it. You know, they know it's not a done battle. Yeah. And uh, and I really I, – I believe it's not a done battle. But I do believe Kyle McCord has the lead. Yes. That's And that's that's kind of the point. Maybe I've been a little off on how I've presented, but that's been my point all spring now is that – I have not seen. I don't think you've been all from Devin Brown to elevate him over Kyle McCord, and so I I right. leave on April fifteenth the same way I entered the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on what was at March sixth. I think Kyle McCord is the leader in this battle, but I do not think it's completely over. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like Devin Brown had as a tough break here where he can't play in this game. You know, we might be having a somewhat of a different conversation. I think we'd still end with the same result, but we'd have more to go off of watching this game we've watched practice we've seen him play it has been up and down it's not like he's been you know winning practice and stuff like that it's been up and down in between sometimes one's better sometimes the other is but he didn't have this opportunity which hurts his case i feel like at least from the outside view yeah, yeah and offensive line is a total different video yeah. to deal with i mean don't you agree because yeah we're going to get into that a lot more that, that's what muddled the picture today is the inconsistency and that's been the, the case when we've gotten to watch scrimmages is the inconsistency of one guy this time and the next guy that you know that old mm -hmm. tired song but 
exactly the case today. I mean, and uh, they've got still got a ways to go, offensive line wise. We're gonna get into that on Monday. Because they too. didn't. I mean, like 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 Ryan said, they didn't re- even even blitz today. I mean, yeah. there's some some guys were coming clean just by coming clean, you know, yeah. and uh, not much chicanery going on up front. So, yeah, they've got they've got a ways to go there. Yeah, we'll we'll talk a lot about the offensive line on Monday, uh, back in this building uh, for the Monday after. We're gonna get back to that uh, here as the off season starts back up, I guess. Second off season, maybe if you will. Yeah. Uh, you know, a long way to go until the fall camp. Uh, I think that it is fair to mention that both Kyle McCord and Devin Brown were asked in a joint media session um, that neither one of them are have any thoughts about transferring. And a lot of times you would think, hey, that. You know that they're just saying that because they're standing next to each other they're in a quarterback battle but like part of me fellas i go back to january of 2021 when we were talking to kyle mccord when he enrolled and he talked about how when he committed here he made a promise to himself that he wasn't going to leave and he was going to battle it out because he knew that the best players in the country come here devin brown said the exact same thing 12 months later in january of 2022 when we talked to him yeah and so you can replay it on my podcast i had with him that quarterback room was loaded when he committed to Ohio State. and so it's just like yes they're just parroting like no i'm not thinking about that and and they're staying on that message but that message has been the message since they got here and so i don't think that the, the transfer portal by the way is officially open today it's open, I think, until April 30th. I do not believe either one of those guys is going to transfer because of an inclination that they may not be the starting quarterback. It, it, they just don't strike me as those kind of players, you know. By the way, is it at the north north end of the stadium, or is it the south end of the stadium that entry, entrance into the transfer portal? Uh, I think it's uh, the south, the north south one. <laughs> it's quite the place, but I just, you know, I, I get the feeling that both these guys are going to be around. Yeah, I think so. I mean. This is the way they, they go about themselves. I think, especially if it's if it's Devin, um, you know, he's got some time here. He's only a redshirt freshman. He's really shown what he can do in terms of his elusiveness, but also his ability to throw on the run. And I think if he doesn't end up winning this job, there's a lot to go off of and to think that, hey, I could be the next guy. And if and if Kyle has a great season this coming year, then, you know, he might be gone to the NFL right away yeah. just because he's been here for a long time. So it's not like they're both the same class year. It's not like, there's just no light at the end of the tunnel for whoever doesn't win. You know, it's maybe a little bit different conversation for Kyle if Devin somehow wins the competition, it's, but. You're absolutely right. And you know, this is not a CJ Stroud, Jack Miller thing. Yeah. This is a this is a different level of, of classes. And so I think that helps with the transfer decision, Tim. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you know, Justin Fields had a horrible spring game. Four of 13, here, Tim. Uh, and uh, bounced back. Yeah. Uh, Cal McCord. This wasn't his first spring game, obviously, but so uh, so. You know the offensive line's got to get fixed, and then you'll see a different look. You'll see a different look looking quarterback. I do believe by the time Indiana rolls around, definitely by the time Youngstown State rolls around, and definitely by the time Notre Dame rolls around September twenty third. That's yeah. going to be a great one. Yeah, uh, a lot to come from Letterman Row about the Ohio three State games game. in Indiana for this team this year. Think about. We'll talk about it all off season, Tim. We do it every day at LettermanRoad.com. We do it every day in the Letterman Lounge. Come hang out with us. The spring special uh, until Mon- Sunday night at midnight. You can get Letterman Row four months for ten dollars. Uh, get all of Andy Baxter's coverage, all of Tim May's coverage, all of mine, all of Matt Parker on the recruiting side. We will be there at LettermanRoad.com every day where we cover the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll be back in this building on Monday for a Monday after uh, presented by Buyers Auto. Tim's going to go work on his golf swing. Until then. We will see you guys back in here Monday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the latest Rapid Reaction presented by Buyers Auto. We'll see you next time.